Hi, my friends. Thanks for joining me. I'm Lorna Schumann with the Illinois State Museum, and today we are in the Changes exhibit, which is all about 500 million years worth of changes in Illinois, but we're going to specifically be in the cave because I bet you didn't realize that there's a whole unique ecosystem underground, not necessarily near our feet, but in different parts of Illinois, mainly along our river systems in the south and in the very northwest corner. So what is a cave? A cave is really a, an opening that's interior underground, and it can be small or it can be large. So it can be really tiny that you can barely get your hand in, but it can be as large as you can drive a truck into. Caves are very unique systems. And you know what? Caves are all about geology underground. So very cool. So how does it really work? So caves are formed because of the action of water flowing. So it deals with three parts of really geology, erosion, weathering, and deposition. So what are those three things? Well, think of it this way. Weathering, if I take a rock and I put it right here on another rock, so imagine this is all rocks. And forces of nature, like wind, water, and ice, work on this rock, but it doesn't move, it's right here, but I can come and pick this rock up, so it used to be part of this, that's weathering. Weathering just breaks down the pieces right there in a spot. Now what is erosion? Erosion is this. If I took that rock and went like this, I've moved it. So erosion is the breaking down and movement of the rock. That's the difference between weathering and erosion. Well, deposition is the carrying away of those and depositing those sediments, those broken down pieces away. And that's what really cave, caves are really about. So caves are really unique because they provide a unique habitat. It's different than up the ground and it's different from different places. But even in places where there is no light and it can't penetrate, caves have special animals that are adapted to live in the dark. That's pretty cool. Can you imagine going your whole life without any light, living underground, being subterranean? That just means underground. Well, our caves here in Illinois are made up of one of two rocks. It's basically limestone or dolomite. It forms the whole basis for Illinois geology. It's what the base rock is. And what's cool about that is we have over 300 caves in our state. So how do caves form? Well, think about it this way. Water is running or seeping. It comes from up above, from above ground, seeps through cracks, down through areas, basically breaks up, erodes different pieces of rock and carry them away, creating large caverns or smaller caverns, depending on the length of time. In fact, geologists can actually measure what's happening and how old things are by how fast things are deposited and created. So when water comes down, it erodes, it breaks up pieces of the rock in the limestone, basically pulls out calcite, carries it down, and deposits it somewhere else, creating drips. So let's look at some of the structures here in our cave to kind of understand a little bit about them. So first off, right here, we have this large column. This is actually originally made up of two different pieces. If you look up on the ceiling, that's probably something you're used to seeing. They're called stalactites. Here's a way to remember it. Stalactites come from the top. They have T for top in them. Well, stalactites, the calcite, basically drips from them down through there, creating and forming those long icicle looking pieces. Well, they're usually in pair with these guys right here. These are stalagmites. Think of it this way, they have a G in it, so it's for the ground. That way you can always figure out which one is stalactite or stalagmite. Well, as the water is dripping and forming 
the stalactites up top, some of the water drips down onto the ground and actually starts forming the stalagmites. Pretty cool. Do you want to try this at home? Here's a cool science activity you can do. You ready? Take some water, take baking soda, stir it into the water as much as you want, and keep going until it can't actually dissolve the baking soda anymore. So you can still see the baking soda in the water. Then take a string, dip it heavily into the baking soda water, pull it out, put it between two different glasses so it kind of hangs over like this. So you're gonna need a long piece of string or twine. You can even use yarn. And then put something on the bottom underneath, like a plate, to catch it. Let it leave there for a few days, and what you'll see is that stalactites start forming crystals all through those strings, but underneath where that forms, you'll see a little drip starting to create and grow from the base on the plate. So you can try that at home. Here's the thing, if you try that at home, be sure to ask the adult first for permission before you get into any of that stuff. But there you can create your own stalactites and stalagmites. Well, we've had the columns, the stalactites, and the stalagmites, but we also have this, and this is seeping out of the wall. They call this a flowstone or drapery. You can kind of see. It's like drapes that hang over our windows. It just kind of flows down and flows to the ground, and sometimes you can actually get it also on the ground. So that's kind of really cool about what we have here inside our cave for the structure of our cave. Now, in the cave is a whole living area, and the caves are actually broken up into three different pieces or zones. The first zone is when you enter. When you first come into a cave, the entrance of the cave is pretty similar to the outside of the cave. The temperature changes slightly. The humidity, that's the moisture in the air, also changes just a little bit. And you can feel the difference as you walk in. So it's pretty close to the outside. The next part, a little bit further back in the cave, is called the twilight zone. Doesn't that sound mysterious? Well, think about when twilight is. Twilight for us is in the evening at around sunset, when the sun is starting to sink and the moon is starting to rise and when it's starting to get dark and light, you kind of have that variable, that changing light system where it's kind of hard to see, so there's less light. The temperature is a little still not very stable. It still varies a little bit, but not a great deal and the humidity changes a little bit. There's still a little bit light in that part of it. So it's really the transition zone between the entrance and our third zone. The third zone is the dark zone, where there's not any light, it's pitch black, and you can't see. The temperature in there stays the exact same. And for Illinois, we have our temperature inside of our caves at about 58 degrees. That might seem pleasant, but then again, may not. It's usually cool, very cold inside of the caves. But here's something else. In the dark zone, the humidity is at 100%, which one, makes it feel like it's colder, but also creates a lot of moisture inside the cave. Now remember, caves are made up from the action of water flowing, so that's important. Now, even in each of those zones, there's other parts where animals do live. One is the ceiling. I know that sounds strange. There's actually things living on the ceiling. There's the walls, like we have here. And then there's the floor. And the last part is a pool, which I'll show you a little later. Because all of these places help make up and create the caves that we have. So you know what? There's all kinds of animals that live inside of caves. So my friends, here we are now at a pool. It's really one of the lifeblood centers of the cave system. And you can see back in here, we have the pool, which is down below. We have some stalactites up top and some flows and some columns in through there. 
they really help us understand a little bit about what happens. Well, remember the three zones? There's different groups of animals that live in all three of those zones. In fact, we have about 250 different species of animals that either live permanently or part-time inside a cave in Illinois. That's what scientists have actually documented or found proof of. That's pretty cool. Well, some animals, they can't live in caves. In fact, they're an important part of the ecosystem. Those animals that can't live in caves sometimes wander into them, get lost, disoriented, and then they die. Now, I know that may sound really sad, but you know what? It allows other animals deeper in the cave to have some nutrients or food source that really helps them survive. And so those animals that are wandering are actually an important part of the ecosystem of the caves. Now, other animals are called cave visitors. Those are things like birds, like turkey vultures, eastern phoebes, which is a little bird, raccoons, um, and camel um, crickets. All of those animals kind of like to visit the cave. They hang out in the cave sometimes and then they go back. They're usually found in the entrance of caves. And so you can find several of them that are like that. Another group of animals that live here in the cave are called cave lovers, are troglophiles. Basically, troglophiles means lover of dark. And so they live in caves, but they can also live other places outside, like under leaf litter, under logs, in darkened places. And they're really interesting ones. So some of those are called like crayfish or centipedes, but one of my favorites is the cave salamander. Now these guys live inside of caves or outside of caves. Their favorite place to live is the twilight zone or even in the dark zone. They're pretty small. They eat arthropods, which are like insects and spiders, but they also will eat things like worms and small little crayfish. Now here's what else. These guys have orange or bright red with black dots scattered throughout. On their belly, if you flipped them upside down, they would have a yellow belly. Now these guys are not very big. They're about four to six inches long. They're pretty small. And that's what you'll find in a lot of the animals that we have here inside the cave in Illinois, that there are quite a few that are really small. Now the next group that we have are called the cave livers. Those are troglobites. I know you guys have probably heard that word before, talking about things that are really dark and live in dark spots. And that's because they live in the total dark phase. They live in the dark zone of it. And there are all kinds of animals that live through there. Now they tend to be paler in color, usually like a white or a grayish. And one of my favorites is this one, the cave anthropod. Now, he is so tiny. He's less than an inch long. That's not even my full knuckle right here, this whole piece of my finger. He's much smaller than that, and he lives in the pools. He eats a lot of the nutrients that drop into the water and around in through there. He's kind of like a shrimp-like. Here's the thing, though. He also only lives now and is only found in six different caves in Illinois anymore. Now those are some of the animals that we do have, but I'm sure you all know one animal that I know and love, the bat, right? How many of you love bats? I do too. And bats are really cool to be able for us to look at. In fact, bats, we have about 13 species of bat in Illinois, Nine of them we can we know and have documents showing they live in our caves. I know some of you are running, where do the other four live? Well, there's lots of places that bats can live. They can live under bridges, they can live in trees, and they can also live in some mines, but they can also live in eaves or places where we have in our house. So bats live in lots of different places. And we have several different bats that live in here. Now, one of the bats, that is very common to find in our caves here are gray bats, little brown bats, big brown bats, 
and also eastern pipistrels, which are kind of rare here. So let's look at some of those bats. You guys ready? Let's go in here into our cave and look. So here we are at the pool, my friends, and we're going to look up and we're going to get to see some of our bat friends. So one, if you look way up over here off to your left hand side, is the Eastern Pipistrelle. He's a very small bat. Most of our bats are very tiny. They're all insectivores here. That means they eat bugs. That's a good thing. And you can see him hanging up there. He's the little brown one. Then over off to his right, you will see the gray bats. There are also very small bats that we have here and insectivores. Bats are one of the bats that do not hibernate inside of our caves. Pretty cool. Well, my friends, let's go back over to the main part of the cave and let's look at some other bat friends that we have. Hi, my friends. We're back here in the main part of the cave with the really tall ceilings, the big cavern. And you know, it's really cool. Scientists are studying bats and learning more. In fact, they actually have particular um, devices that allow them to listen to bats and by the sound that a bat makes, the actual device they have can tell them what type of bat they are and can help them count how many bats are in their cave. It's pretty cool. Now, let's look up over here and look at these other bats that we have. And you can see that we have some bats in little colonies up there. Pretty cool. Well, here's the thing about caves. Whenever you go into caves, you should always talk relatively quiet because bats don't like loud noises and we can actually disrupt them and cause them to move away. And that's not good for them. Caves, um, bats are actually, some of them on the endangered species list. And so we need to take care of them because here's the truth. One, I like bats. Two, our bats eat insects and if it wasn't for them, we would have lots of bugs in our faces. Well, my friends, our time has come to an end. And as you can see, caves do go on and they keep making larger caverns and branches and networks throughout under our feet. And it's important that we are very careful. Please don't go into caves by yourself. Always make sure you have permission to go to any cave and that people know where you're going. Make sure you're dressed appropriately, nice and warm, and you carry appropriate lighting, at least three pieces of separate lighting. So thank you for joining me today, my friends. Enjoy, and remember, there really is life underground. Take care. Bye.